Hi there, Allison here with another Capron du Jour. Today we are in Anjou and we're looking at the Domaine Au Giraud 2018 Les Thailles Anjou Village Cabernet Franc. Vincent Au Giraud is the fourth generation to be working in his family's domain that was set up by his great grandfather in 1890. His first vintage was in 1982, working alongside his father Francis, and the 2015 vintage marked the date that the fifth generation, Vincent's son Emmanuel, joined the estate as well. They have 26 hectares of vines in parcels throughout the appellations of Anjou, Côte de Léon, and Savignères. All their vineyards are farm certified organic, and they are employing biodynamic principles in the vineyard and cellar as well. Now, in this particular part of Anjou, in and around the commune of Tourassé, is where the old rocks of the Massif Amoricain take over from the sedimentary based limestone soils of the Paris Basin. It is here where Chenin Blanc shines, and Cabernet Franc needs to be planted on very specific sites uh, in order to be successful. So why is this? Well, in this part of Anjou, we are in the rain shadow effect of the Massif Amoricain, which is this ancient mountain range, which at one point was as high as the Alps. And then over the course of 400 or so millions of years, uh, it became weathered down to now around 200 or so meters in most parts. So southwest of the city of Angers, there's this ridge, uh, and it rises about two 200 meters or so above sea level, but that is enough to block out a good chunk of the moisture that would otherwise be coming in off the Atlantic Ocean. And as a result, uh, this part of Anjou receives relatively low rainfall, about 760 millimeters of rainfall per year, making it one of the driest areas in all of the Loire Valley. Now, in addition to this low rainfall, uh, the soils here, which are collectively known as Anjou Noir, are, are this complex mix of schists, slate, uh, sandstones, uh, and these soils do not retain moisture to the same degree that chalk or limestone does. Now, Cabernet Franc, as a grape variety, needs a certain degree of moisture delivered to the vines throughout the growing season at sort of regular intervals. And this combination of low rainfall, in addition to these soils that um, are quite arid, they're, they're dense, they're brittle, they don't retain moisture very well, Cap Franc can struggle on these terroirs. And as a result, cre this would create an imbalance in the vine, it can lead to excessive pyrazines in the glass, and it can also lead to uh, more tan uh, rustic tannins in the mouth. Uh, now, so when it comes to Cabernet Franc in Anjou, site selection becomes really critical here. So as a vigneron, what am I thinking about when I want to plant uh, Cabernet Franc in Anjou? Well, ideally I'm looking for parcels in my vineyards uh, that will have deeper topsoil, uh, so there's less direct contact with the schist. And in addition to that, that topsoil should have a good amount of clay in it, uh, and because clay has a certain uh, degree of moisture retention uh, capacity to it, uh, more so than say sand does. Uh, so for this wine, this is coming from a 1.3 hectare parcel of Cabernet Franc vines uh, that's from a single UD called Les Tailles, and we're in the commune of saint Labelle de la Thée, which is on the south side of the Léon River. There's an additional tributary here called the Lidrome, uh, which runs perpendicular to the Léon, and that sort of defines the landscape uh, here in this part of saint Labelle de la Thée. So where Les Tailles is, we're kind of sloping towards the Lidrome, so we're on the southeast facing slope. Uh, the bedrock here is called Briovarian schist and there's a good vein of quartz that runs through the bedrock as well. We have about 60 centimeters of topsoil and it's a mix of silt, sand and clay, about 30% clay content. And the vines here are actually quite old. Uh, they were planted by Francis, Vincent's father, uh, back in the 1950s. Now, uh, from a winemaking perspective, uh, when it comes to Cabernet Franc in Anjou, uh, the site really does inform sort of the winemaking decisions here. Um, and the name of the game is really gentle. Um, because uh, Cabernet Franc has a certain inherent rusticity to it and uh, that can be amplified on these schist soils. So as a vigneron you want to be very careful with how you handle uh, Cabernet Franc, uh, erring on the side of more gentle techniques in the cellar. Uh, so for this wine uh, this was uh, all hand-picked fruit, de-stemmed, and fermentation took place in uh, concrete vats and then the maceration technique here is infusion. So rather than say um, more intensive cap management techniques, like say pump overs or punch downs, uh, this is more of like a steeping process where the, the skins will steep with the wine uh, and gently infuse the tannins uh, into the finished wine uh, rather than more uh, sort of extracting more aggressive uh, tannins from the skins. Uh, it rested on skins for about 25 days and then it was racked off skins and then transferred into two types of vessels. Uh, about two thirds would have been into um, sort of uh, these underground vats and then a third went into a 500 liter oak barrels so let's get into the wine 
Now the nose has a really uh, deep, pure fruited profile. I'm getting notes kind of like black raspberry, there's a bit of cassis here, a touch of lingonberry as well. But the, the fruits kind of sit a little bit lower in terms of sort of that olfactory uh, position, sort of uh, in terms of the nose. Uh, but it's sort of countered by this really nice top note of perfume. Um, sort of notes like uh, peony, a touch of jasmine here, and that sort of helps to provide a certain degree of lift to the nose. And the pyrazines do take a little bit of a back seat here. Um, it, I would describe this wine uh, as more fruit forward, but the pyrazines do give a little bit of a sense of cut to the wine. Uh, they come through for me as sort of like a, a cedar note and a touch of thyme as well. Now on the palette, um, those same fruits come through really nicely. Um, and then what really leads here uh, from a structural stamp standpoint is sort of the mouthfeel and the tannins. So in the mouth, it's quite mouth filling, but it does have a certain silkiness in the mouth. Uh, and the tannins kind of finish with this really certain degree of firmness. Uh, they're fine knit, uh, really kind of tightly woven, uh, and they have a nice velvety texture to them. But it's this sort of sort of full, dense kind of um, but silky mouth feel coupled with this sort of velvety tannin finish that sort of leads uh, in terms of the wine's profile uh, on sort of the palate first. And then it's like it comes in with the acidity kind of towards the end. So it's like it leads with tannins and then the acidity helps with a cleansing effect. And the acidity is really fresh, very energetic, quite persistent. But again, it's a certain sort of low reverberation in the wine that sort of sits there throughout the whole palate experience, as opposed to say a wine that has more tart, piercing, bracing acidity that's almost higher. Uh, this is sort of this low uh, acidity energy that sort of sits there uh, throughout the whole palate experience. I love how there's this additional note, uh, this sort of smoky graphite thing on the palate as well. And there's a really nice sort of cinnamon stick kind of spice note as well. Uh, the wine is super soulful. Um, it has this real um, sort of honest feel to it. Um, there's a certain degree of meticulousness to the wine as well. You can really sense that uh, there's some good skill happening in the vineyard as well as in the cellar. Um, and when I was making my notes earlier on this, I don't often sort of think about uh, music uh, when I'm tasting because often my brain is going way, way too analytical for that. But sometimes wines speak to me and um, this wine was doing that for me. And I was thinking about how different it feels um, energetically compared to like a Chinon or Bourgogne or, or a Sommer Champigny. And I'm not sure why it feels that way, but it does have a certain uh, energy to it that is different from those wines. And I immediately thought about um, Sergei Rachmaninoff's his Piano Concerto Number no. Two as this wine compared to say a Vivaldi Four Seasons Spring Movement, um, which I would associate more with sort of the wines of these limestone-based soils like Chinon and Bagoy and, and Sommer Champigny. Um, and I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody, but that is literally where my head was at today when I was tasting this. But there is a certain soulfulness, uh, a certain dramatic uh, character to this wine, but it's still got a degree of restraint, a degree of elegance as well. Um, these red wines uh, from Anjou, from these Anjou Noir so soils, are a little bit more difficult to find. Um, but if you do come across one, I highly recommend seeking it out and maybe even doing an exercise of opening a bottle of Chinon or something like that alongside it, just to see uh, if you notice uh, any major difference between the energies of the wine. If you've had this wine before, let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. And of course, as always, I will be back again soon with another wine. Cheers.